So we're going to make 11 by 14 cyanotypes today. They look like this. Here they are next to each other. Here it is right on top of each other. So this is a standard eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So theoretically, this should be the same length across as this paper is wide. Yep, neato. And so now we have these instructions on how to make a cyanotype, which are useful, because we're gonna make cyanotypes today. And we have these cyanotype sheets, which we can actually just place some objects on and start saving their shadows. Let's start with two little uh, army guys here. I brought in some props, because it's fun to have stuff to play with when you're making cyanotypes. So let's take a look at what we have. We got some controllers for video gamery. We got some uh, army guys that my mom got at the dentist for being a really good dental patient. We got um, some cardboard and a vinyl record album, which is translucent. And that makes it really fun for cyanotypes because you can do all sorts of fun things with the translucent cyanotype object. Right now we're doing a real simple cyanotype. We're just giving these guys kind of a, a marching destiny. And I think this is going to be good for them. Let's do boom. So now we have our objects on our paper. We now have the easiest job in the world. All we have to do is let the sun light in. And we got a cyanotype already being made. I'm going to scoot them into the fully exposable light right there. And there we go. We're probably going to leave these guys for about five to six to ten minutes as an arbitrary number of minutes. Because you got to start somewhere once we've seen how these guys turn out, which actually I'm going to I'm going to jump the gun a little bit. I'm going to bring out the one that I pre-made earlier. So these guys eventually will make this. Put it over here. Yeah, maybe somewhere where you can see it would be a good choice. How about right here? There we go. Okay. Nope. I'm really on a roll here. How about this? Here we go. Now, now I'm a rocket scientist. And we're going to take a brief break, close this back up, and take a look at them together like this. And we can maybe... Maybe get a little spoiler. Oh, look at that. See? Here we go. These guys have shadow saved themselves. So right now you can actually see that there's a... I'll, I'll have to lift this guy up to, to demonstrate this. When you lift him up, you can see his shadow's still there. Even though I picked him up. Put him back. Trying to get him similar angle as before, but I, I don't think I'll get it just right. Maybe though. Okay. So what we've done is we've exposed this paper, which is light sensitive, to sunlight. And over a duration of time, the parts that expose to sunlight have chemistry, chemically changed. They've undergone a transformation and they're actually going to wash away now as a result of that, leaving a kind of dark blue color in their, in their place. The parts that didn't receive any sun exposure will not undergo that chemical change at all. Effectively, they will wash away when we do this development, and this part that looks yellow will become white. That is a cyanotype. The parts that are exposed to sun on a cyanotype become dark blue. The parts that are kept from the sun, for example, underneath an action figure, stay white. And in between, you have all sorts of gradations as well. In fact, we're going to we're not going to make an identical version of this because we already know how this one will turn out. We're going to make a modified version of this once we've got a little more of an exposure on these two action figures. Let's resume the exposure. Oh, now we can actually try to adjust his shadow a tiny bit more now that we can see where, the, where it all goes. Yeah, hey, we're doing a pretty good job. What a... Relief. 
That's a joke about the fact that you can see the outline just a little bit beyond his shadow. That provides a relief against which we can see contrast. Let's make more cyanotypes. So this is fine, but let's take it over here and leave it somewhere else. And let's make our next cyanotype by taking these video game controllers, which I think are pretty neat. And we'll start with this one, because I think it's got an iconic shape. And we can actually kind of pre-diagram what this will look like if we take an existing piece of paper, <laughs> for example, this one, which, uh, whatever, I'm going to turn it upside down, and now it's our kind of dusty, canvas that we can experiment on. So now we'll pretend this is our eventual cyanotype. I'm going to put that just right there. I'm going to put that just right there. And we're going to try to understand how that we want the logic to work. And what I mean by that is I'm about, I'm about to put some object on this paper, some objects on this paper. I first want to understand how the shadow is going to be communicated. So in this case, I want to adjust the angle just a little bit so that it's kind of more of a 45 degree angle that it's coming in at. And I want to adjust the paper angle a little bit. Kind of like this, like that, okay. And like that. Okay, so now we have this straight up and down narrow image of a controller. Looks interesting. Let's wrap some cable up. And let's wrap it up one more time. Okay. I'm excited to see what this will look like. All right. Now let's do the same thing underneath with the game, uh, the Genesis controller. Boom. And they can have the same profile. Go like that. And they can have the same kind of controller logic where neither one of them will have an obvious directionality to it, meaning there is no implied gravity to this image. So it doesn't look like one of these is hanging from the top and the other is falling toward the bottom. Both of these should look like they exist beyond, beyond the literal dimensions that they are captured to. If you can end a sentence with two, I just have. Sounded nice. All right, I think we've made it a cyanotype of merit. Let's swap this blank page out and see what it looks like with the cyanotype page. We're gonna cover this back up just like that. And because I have a window here, this whole area is coming in just natural sunlight and I've got window blinds that I can draw and, and open. adjusted these so I don't know quite what it's gonna look like anymore but that's okay because part of the fun of cyanotype is is really it's just saying I don't know what will happen so that's why I'm actually making this cyanotype so let us be those people who don't know what will happen and decide to try so that they can find out have to be ready to move it quick too because who knows maybe the way I have it is not ideal for this paper I think that looks good I think we just need the minorest adjustment there and uh, yeah now we leave this one 
I think these guys are done. Let's change one thing about their image. Let's give them an interesting background. We've already seen what the screen looks like, but I'm curious what the, uh, the record album looks like for these guys. And there we go. Maybe I'll put them back on top too. No, 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 because the whole point is it's going to transpose. Okay. Let's make another one. I'm going to get another piece of paper. Okay, well, we can move this paper a little bit, as long as we don't adjust it too much. There we go. And we can bring a new paper in, and we can put something on it first. That looks fun. Cardboard. So let's take our cardboard right there put it right there okay, go like that who knows what or why it's up to us to create a motivation for the reasons these things are occurring for example why is it going diagonal here this slash i don't know but i bet we'll figure out why it's doing that you know why we chose that in a bit once we see what the uh, underneath looks like. But we can also start adding things to that one to, um, first of all, to weigh it down, but also to create, again, sort of an implied order and logic to it. So if I create these spikes running across it, going this way and that way, we have all these interesting interceptions, and we can start accommodating those with things like a block placed. Right there, and maybe right there, and maybe right here. And now we have three blocks. Okay, neato. Why did we do that? I don't know yet. But now we can do it in a different way here. And we'll add another three. And again, three is a number of arbitrary nature. I like how it's looking so far, though. And we'll go like three like that. Yeah, that looks like it's about the same distance from the other one. These are called Kapla blocks, by the way. I'm going to look and see if any of these have that written on them. But they are so great. They, they're like Lego with, with fewer studs because a Lego has all those little dots on top and these just have a flat, planar surface. Couldn't be planer than that. Wow, okay, none of these say Kapla on it, which is nice, actually. Keep going here, another three. Looking good. And what are we going to do? Well, look at this. We already started with the diagonal swath here, this point being the middle of the circle, and it's already moved. It shifted. In the couple minutes we've been doing this, it's changed quite a bit. And take a look at this. Right here, there's an area of no exposure because the paper has curled up on itself and it has been blocking itself with its own shadow. We're gonna fix that. Not that it needs fixing, but we are going to do something to cause less notice to it on the final print. There we go. Just to give it a little exposure bump. These guys are done. Still see them. And we can expose this to the sun for another second or two. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, looks. Pretty good. I'm gonna take it over here for the time being until we're ready to develop it. I'm apparently pressing a button, there we go. Turn that off. And now we're gonna do one more cyanotype with the time we have. I'm gonna take this record away 
I'm going to take some of our beautiful flowers here because there are so many nice ones to pick from. Take this one and this. And I'm sorry for the little guys I'm ruining, but I think they're going to be better off for being immortalized. Okay, now we have these nice little bits of foliage. Put them right here. I'm going to block. I'm blocking the sun with my own body. And I'm kind of using myself as a shade against which the sun cannot penetrate. And we'll do that. This is going to be like an underwater scene, maybe. I don't know yet. We will discover... Let guy grab onto something. Looks like these plants are all going to be blowing in the wind a bit. He'll just be chilling. He's just, he's just satisfied. We're gonna do this for funsies. And because I don't yet know how it'll work. Yeah, that's gonna be nice, okay. Cool. This is going to be a neat one because we got this natural shadow area here that's formed by the ledge and we got, well, it doesn't matter. It's looking good. Okay. I'm now going to do something with this one to make it a little more visually interesting, in my opinion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand in its own shadow. I'm going to make my own shadow for it again. I'm going to do this. Boop, 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 boop. And then I'm going to go like this. And then we're going to do this. And then that. And then 180 degrees is going to go. And then we're going to go like this. And we're going to go like that. And we're going to do that. I don't want to see the USB anywhere. And then I think we've got what we need to get an effect. Okay. This is going to be a neat effect, too. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that was easy. All right, let's see what happens. These are looking real good. Now we can take this off, keeping our reference sticks. And we can go like this and like that. And like this, 
There we go, lining up the diagonal again. And then we can go like this and like that and then like this. I don't know what I'm doing, do you? That's okay. We don't need to know what, you know what we're doing to make cyanotypes. We just need to say, I think this is going to be fun. I can try it now. And that's the right attitude with cyanotype. I can try it. It's immediate feedback. Like, I just bumped this and I see exactly what that did. Feedback. And this is all going really nice, but I still don't know what it's going to be. And I like that about it. I think, I think this one is almost done. It can be done. Let's let this one be done. Okay. Here's, so here's this one. This one's going to be crazy weird. And we can scoot this one in a, in a this way fashion. Because I have all these indicators of what angle they're at. These, uh, these particular blocks are all angled in a certain way that they indicate like a, like almost like a sundial what my direction of sun angle is, like this. Pretty sure that's 45 degrees. But we're going to find out on the finished cyanotype. Almost 45 degrees. Let's do this. There we go. Because now I'm lining this up with this, which is correct. Yeah, there we go. And these 11 by 14 cyanotype papers, each of them could have been cut up if I wanted to. Like, for example, this page, which is 11 inches by 14 inches, I could have cut it into an 8 by 10 and two 4 by 6s and a 3 by 5. So this would have given me four individual sheets if I'd wanted it to. Or I could have made like a 6 by 9, which is kind of big, but not... Not so crazy big, and then a couple five by sevens, which is a great portrait size or any whatever size, and then some three and a half by fives or a bunch of four by sixes and three by fives. This is a versatile size for cyanotype, which is why I've actually started offering four packs of this, just kind of ready to go. They get shipped out on uh, the Etsy store that I've got. It's called lightprintpaper.com. So you can actually go straight there and see the papers. And if you want to get some, they're all yours. These are the exact papers. I, when I get an order, I make a batch of like four times more than the order is for, and then I use those three times leftovers for myself, like these. Someone ordered some paper yesterday, so I made a fresh batch, and this is verifying that they work. And then they get sent out as well. Everybody wins. Let's do one more adjustment here. See one that's shifted. Do, 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 do. Sound effects optional, always helpful. And then once we're done, we get to wash these. We wash them with plain ordinary water. We can do it right in a little tub. And uh, we get to see it happen live. It's very simple to do, provided you live in a place with water. And if so, you are very lucky. Water is such a gift to have. 
to have enough to make cyanotypes is probably the most luxurious thing I can imagine at the moment. On a, on a human needs and rights basis, having more than enough water is a pretty awesome thing to feel. And I know it's not the case, but today we have enough water to play with. Today we're going to do it. And then we'll go backwards in time even, going this way. Now, if I remove one of these, like this one, that will leave an absence of sorts on the finished cyanotype that will be filled in a little bit by sunlight here, but wherever it's in shadow, it will not. And we'll get a contrast as a result of that con um, removal of the branch. So now we'll do that here too. Get some good contrast in our image. Because contrast is what helps us as humans understand things. We automatically look for the dark spots and the bright spots in an area, right at the middle where they meet. That's the line of contrast, and that helps us define shapes and other things. We're, our bodies are hardwired to do that. We have these things in our bodies called rods, and those are the things that help us understand brightness. When they react with light, we automatically get a response, and... We have all sorts of things that happen in our body that we take for granted every day. It's just, oh, that's just how eyesight works. But it's actually improbably complicated. And we're lucky that it works so well without us having to consciously think about how to make our eyesight work. Okay, so that's finished. We can even close these up all together. We're that finished. All right. pick up our workspace the littlest bit so that we can move in the water tank, which is really just like at a long trough. It's like a plastic laundry bin that is filled with water. There we go. Looking good. Okay. Let's bring in our other two. Ooh, cool. Okay. So we got our four cyanotypes. Let's look. Let's develop them with some water. We're going to do three at a time. Two at a time. Yeah, three at a time. Yeah, we'll do them all. Okay. Got them all in there. Now we're going to add our water. And this is going to be water out of the tap. This is right out of the sink water. It's not special besides the fact that it's magic water in the fact that it can be drunk and used for laundry and dishes and every other thing we need water for. That's what it's magic water for. And I just added the tiniest splash of hydrogen peroxide to the water. That's going to do something that activates the process faster than it normally would on its own. And that will make for a more impactful and dramatic development, which helps us on video make it look extra fun. If you use too much hydrogen peroxide, it basically eats away at the image like bleach, and then you end up with nothing. But we're not doing that today. Water. 
Here's how we know it's safe. Poor. And now we have a very nice immediate feedback of how they turned out. So we got this one here. You can see the yellow on it is washing off. That was all the undeveloped chemistry. The stuff that did, did get developed is now dark blue, the things that the light touched. Ooh, this one looks neat. This is safe to touch if you do it quick, but don't do it a lot. So use tongs in the big picture. But if you get some on your hands, just go rinse your hands. I like the cord effect there. All right, well, that was our four cyanotypes. Let us, I'm going to exchange this developed, like kind of saturated water. I'm going to exchange this for fresh water, and I'll bring these back in just a moment. And then we can put them on the screen for drying. So I'm currently just dumping this water that is yellow with the residual chemistry into the sink, and that is a safe enough process to do. It is not as dangerous as the kind of chemicals they use in developing photochemistry for black and white or color photos. Now we have some cyanotypes. We can put them on the screen. It's literally a window screen taken out of the window by uh, my uncle who makes them, Torpin Screen Company. But they're very nice for drying prints because it lets the air get all around them and you can drip dry them, which I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, so now we have these cyanotypes here. We're going to just drain them. Watch how the water drips. Watch for drips down there in the water, the ripples. There we go. So now we got three, one, two, three. Move that over here. We got one more. Sorry, that was loud. Go right there. that one and now we've made four cyanotypes that's pretty cool I think but I think one cyanotype is cool so I'm biased but I'm glad you were here to make these with me because they're more fun to share with another like it's nice when you can look back and be like oh yeah I remember when we made that cyanotype and again if you want to get this paper these exact sheets for 11 by 14s I will ship them to you anywhere in the world. comes with this little sheet. It's on lightprintpaper.com. And then you can have just as much fun as I did. Or more. I mean, I have a lot of fun. So thank you for being part of it.